Sheffield United have lost the first game of the season by one goal against Crystal Palace at home. Despite the fact the final scoreline was only 1-0, it was a comfortable win for Palace and the scoreline flattered us. But what I will say is, try not to worry too much Blades because we started with a really poor lineup. As you can see here, we could have started a much better lineup. Just based on the players who are fit to play, I think we could have gone with this instead. As you can see, I think Brooks starting in midfield over Basham would have been an improvement, as well as LaRucci over Lowe, who I feel like despite having a good first half, struggled in the second half, and Jordan Ayew kept getting away from him. Additionally, I think Trusty is just a better centre-back than Robbo. Not that Robbo made any major mistakes in this game, but like I said, I just think Trusty's better. I feel like potentially Hecky started a worse side on purpose here, which may be a bit petty, but just to show the board that we desperately need new signings. Look, we're just going to have to be realistic. What we have to accept is that business in the window has been left quite late. So the games before the window shuts, we're just going to have to write them off a little bit. Obviously, I feel like we should have got business done quicker in the window so that we could be competitive from the first game week. But, you know, it is what it is. The club have acted in the way they have. Um, and any points we get from these first three games, we're just going to have to see as a bonus. Um, once the window is shut and players are going to be fit, coming back from injury... The starting lineup is going to look a, a little bit more like this. So like I've said, I think Trusty starts over Robbo. I think LaRucci starts over Low. Obviously, we're going to be playing with a double pivot of Souza and Hamer, And then Slomani will be playing a bit more of an advanced role. As you can see, this is a significantly better starting line than what we fielded against Palace. Um, and also bear in mind that there's probably going to be at least another two incomings before the window shuts um, who would come in and be starters. Obviously, if we get Archer from Villa... I think he's going to play where I've put Ozola in that starting lineup, And then if we get uh, McAtee, he would play where I've put Slomani in that more advanced midfield role. And like I've said, I think this would be a much more competitive starting eleven in the bottom end of the Premier League, and this would probably keep us up. Looking at the positives of the Crystal Palace game, um, not currently in the relegation zone, you know, stop the count. <laughs> um, we've only conceded one goal. Uh, Ozola looks sharp. The, the subs look good when they came on. Uh, I think they all look good, but if I was going to pick one in particular, I think looked really good. I'd say Larucci. I think, you know, Lowe had a good first half, but in the second half, Ayu was getting away from him. And when Larucci came on, he stuck to him quite well. Um, and now I think that means that we've got two solid left wing back options. Um, and then when we kept the ball on the floor and tried to play football, I think we looked quite good at, in periods. And talking about the negatives, um, we didn't make any good chances really. Um, we only had eight shots on goal and only one of them was on target uh, and that was from Norwood outside the box which was straight down the keeper's throat. Obviously compared that to Palace they had 24 shots and eight of them were on target and of those eight they could probably have scored three I reckon um, but I think poor finishing let them down a little bit. Um, our set pieces were really poor. Uh, they're sort of not a myth but I think People think Norwood's better at set pieces than he really is. Um, I think there were a few times where we were struggled to beat the first man. Uh, I think another issue was there was a total lack of creativity. We just kept hitting it long and hoping that um, Traore or Azula could make something happen. We might as well not have played with the midfield, really, with how, with how we were playing, because we just bypassed them every time. Um, additionally, I think a better team than Palace would have put more than three past us today. And, and finally, I think the subs came on too late. Probably about 10 minutes too late. And now I'm just going to talk about Wes. Um, coming into this season, I wasn't sure about Wes if we needed a, a new goalkeeper or not. Um, and maybe if Wes would be the difference between us staying up and not staying up. Um, but in fairness to him, I thought he played quite well. Um, but I do understand why some people thought that he didn't do well. Because he did parry it out twice. Which would have led to goals if it wasn't for sort of lucky offsides. Which sort of comes back to the point I made where... A better team than Palace with better players who can stick on side would have scored, you know, would have taken those chances. Something to note is that to stay in the Premier League, all you need is about 35 or 36 points based on the previous few seasons. That's only 10 wins and a few draws, which is definitely doable for us. So don't let one poor game sour you for the rest of the season. Just look at Newcastle two seasons ago. They didn't win a game for their first 14, but they still managed to stay up comfortably. Looking towards our upcoming fixtures then, um, we have Forest and City before the transfer window shuts. Um, 
what we're going to have to do is just try and keep a clean sheet away at Forest next week and then nick a goal from, the, say, like a Hamer set piece. Um, and then, obviously, against City, I think it's fair to say we're going to lose because I think everyone will lose to City this season, bar, you know, a few. But what I will say is we're going to have to try and keep it as low scoring as possible because we've seen, like, other relegation rivals like Burnley lost by three. So we need to try and keep the scoring low so that we maintain a, a good goal difference. And then we have to pick up some points against Everton at home on the 2nd of September. At this point, all the business will be done. We're going to have a competitive lower end of the Premier League squad. And we should, we should be able to beat Everton, hopefully. And then just get the season going, start picking up points. But yeah, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.